This is a line. To some, it is seen as a barrier. To others, it's a point where traditions of the past are abandoned in favor of visions of the future. Introducing the revolutionary new Toyota Supra. It's taken everything sports cars were before and crossed the line. 2JZ, 4th Gen, A80, Worldwide Icon, a world beater, most importantly, 10 second car. Don't need to say more. Give the intro. By the early 90s, the Japanese had gotten rather good at making sports cars. Customers were being spoiled by cars like the R32 GTR, Mazda's MX-5 and RX-7, the Honda NSX, the Nissan 300ZX, and the Mitsubishi 3000 GT. Toyota needed to do something extraordinary, and so the A80 program began in February 1989, under various teams for design, product planning, and engineering, led by Isao Suzuki who had also worked on the first Celica and both generations of MR2. By the middle of 1990, a final A80 design concept from Toyota Technical Center Aichi was approved and frozen for production in late 1990. The first test mules were hand-built in a 70 bodies during late 1990, followed by the first A80 prototypes being hand-assembled in 1991. Again using subframe, suspension, and drivetrain assemblies from the Z30 Soarer. Pre-production of the test models started in December 1992, with 20 units made, and official mass production began in April 1993. The fourth generation Supra again shared its platform with the upscale Sora Coupe, sold in the US as the Lexus SC. Unlike anything Toyota had produced before, the A80's proportions and flowing design owed more to the 2000 GT of the 60s than its predecessor. With a long low bonnet line and high-rise optional rear spoiler, it was aerodynamically efficient and clearly aimed at delivering a much higher top speed. Less is more was the key concept during development of the A80, manifested in external dimensions that were shorter, lower, and wider than the outgoing car, while the extensive use of lightweight materials helped the engineers lose 100 kg of mass compared to its predecessor. Even the carpet fibers were hollow to save weight, this redesign saw Toyota placing great emphasis on a more serious high-performance car. The A80 featured two new engines, a naturally aspirated Toyota 2JZGE having a power output of 220 horsepower and 210 Newton meter torque, and a twin turbocharged Toyota 2JZ GTE having a power output of 276 horsepower and 431 Newton meter torque for the Japanese model. For the export model, Toyota upgraded the Super Turbo's engine by installing smaller, steel-wheeled turbochargers and bigger fuel injectors. This increased the power output to 321 horsepower and 427 newton meter torque. Upon its launch in 1993, it was the first Toyota-badged vehicle to include a passenger-side airbag as standard. The twin turbochargers operated in sequential mode instead of parallel. Initially, all of the exhaust gases are routed to the first turbine for reduced lag. This resulted in boost and enhanced torque as early as 1,800 RPM, where it already produced 407 newton meter of torque. At 3,500 RPM, some of the exhaust gases are routed to the second turbine for a pre-boost mode, although none of the compressor output is used by the engine at this point. At 4,000 RPM, the second turbo's output is used to augment the first turbo's output. Compared to the parallel mode, sequential mode turbochargers provide quicker low RPM response and increased high RPM boost. This high RPM boost was also aided with technology originally present in the 7MGE in the form of the acoustic control induction system, which is a way of managing the air compression pulses within the intake piping to increase power. For this generation, the Supra received a new six-speed Getrag Toyota V 160 gearbox on the turbo models, while the naturally aspirated models were equipped with a five-speed manual W58 transmission revised from the previous model. Each model was offered with a four-speed automatic with manual shifting mode. 
the turbocharged variant could accelerate zero to 60 miles in as low as 4.6 seconds and cover a quarter mile in 13.1 seconds at 109 miles per hour. It has a drag coefficient of 0.31 for the naturally aspirated models and 0.32 for the turbo models but unknown with the rear spoiler. The standard A80 Supra chassis has also proven an effective platform for road racing, with several top 20 and top 10 One Lap of America finishes in the SSGT1 class. In 1994, the A80 managed remarkable skid pad ratings of 0.95 lateral Gs and 0.98 lateral Gs. The Supra also featured a four-sensor, four-channel track-tuned ABS system with yaw control whereby each caliper is censored and the brakes are controlled individually according to the speed, angle, and pitch of the approaching corner. This unique Formula One-inspired braking system allowed the Super Turbo to record a 113 to 0 kilometer braking distance of 149 feet, the best braking performance of any production car tested in 1997 by Car and Driver magazine. This record was finally broken in 2004 by a Porsche Carrera GT, which did it in 145 feet. Even though its front engine, rear wheel drive format never altered throughout the history of the Toyota Supra, the MK4 was by far the most successful in motorsport. The model won its class in the Swiss mountain races, competed at the iconic Le Mans 24-hour race two years running, charged up Pikes Peak, was competitive in American SCCA racing, and became a dominant force in the All Japan GT Championships from 1995 all the way through to 2003. Despite these successes, however, times were changing, and worldwide vehicle purchasing trends were slowly moving away from sports cars like the Supra. When the A80 Supra was discontinued in the UK in late 1996, it had notched up 600 sales from a total of 16,000 Supras sold in the UK across all generations. By the end of 1998, the Supra's four-generation run in North America had also finished, which left the domestic market carrying on with lowered annual production runs until the car was finally axed in July 2002, primarily because it was deemed too expensive to meet forthcoming exhaust emissions targets.